I was young, my parents brought my older brother and I to visit my grandfather and grandmother. We didn't see her very much because she lived way out in the countryside in Akita. As soon as we arrived at our grandparents' house, my brother and I went out to play. The air was much fresher and cleaner than it was city. We walked through the rice fields, enjoying the wide open spaces. The sun was high in the sky and there was no breeze. The heat was stiff, stifling and after a while I started to get tired. My brother stopped suddenly. He was staring at something in the distance. What are you looking at? I asked. A thing over there, he replied. The rice field stretched as far as the eye could see and the area was completely deserted. I squinted my eyes, but I couldn't make out what it was. Far away, across the fields, there was a white thing, about the size of a person. It was moving and wriggling as if it was fluttering in the breeze. Maybe it's a scarecrow, I said. It's not a scarecrow, my brother replied. Scarecrows don't move like that. Maybe it's a sheet, then, I said. No, it's not a sheet, he replied. There are no other houses around here. Besides, there's no wind, but it's still moving and wriggling. What the heck is that thing? I had a strange and uneasy feeling in the pit of my stomach. My brother ran back to the house, and when he returned, he was carrying a pair of binoculars. Oh, can I see? I asked excitedly. I made a grab for the binoculars, and he, but he pushed me back. No, me first, he said with a chuckle. I'm the oldest. You can have a look when I'm done. As soon as my brother put the binoculars up to his eyes, I noticed his expression suddenly changed. His face grew pale and he broke out into a sweat. He dropped the binoculars on the ground and I could see fear in his eyes. What was it? I asked nervously. My brother replied slowly. There it is. There it is. There it is. It was not my brother's voice. Without another word, he turned and started walking back to the house. Something didn't feel right. With trembling hands, I bent down and picked up the binoculars. I was too scared to look through them. In the distance, the white object was still twisting and turning. Just then, my grandfather came running over. What are you doing with those binoculars? he asked. Nothing, I replied. Just looking at the white thing over there. What? he shouted. You shouldn't look at that. He snatched the binoculars from my grasp. Did you see it? he demanded angrily. Did you look as if at it through the binoculars? No, I said in a meek voice. Not yet. My grandfather sighed the relief. Good, he said. That's good. Without knowing why, I was sent back to the house. When I walked into the kitchen, everyone was crying. My brother was rolling around on the ground, laughing like a crazy person. He was on his back and his body was wriggling and twisting, just like the white thing in the distance. I couldn't understand what was going on. It was horrible to see him like that. I burst into tears. He wasn't my brother anymore. He had completely lost his mind. The next day, my parents decided to take us home. My grandmother and grandfather stood on their porch, waving sadly to us as the car pulled away. I sat in the back seat with my brother, wiping the tears from my eyes. My brother was still laughing like a mental patient. They had to tie him up to stop him from moving around. His face was twisted into a wide smile. He looked like he was happy, but when I saw his eyes, I realized he was crying. It sent a chill down my spine. His cheeks were wet with tears, but he just kept laughing and laughing. My father pulled over to the side of the road and got out of the car. He took the binoculars and furiously smashed them on the street. Then, without saying anything, he got back into the car.